Okay, so now we can start painting. We'll start with the background and work our way. Well, we'll do two things, not just the background. I'm going to establish the darkest dark and the lightest light. It looks dark from where I'm sitting, but I can't tell. So what I'm going to do is paint that on a bit of scrap and I will compare that to some pure black. So when that black dries, we'll have an idea of how dark that color there actually is. For the most part, that area is going to be quite dark. Let's cover a little topic called the five types of light. Not the actual types of light, not sunlight, not overcast. That's not what is meant by this five types of light. Light. In other words, the light side of an object. The halftone side of an object. Think, think of these positions on a sphere as, as a basic beginning. Shadow, reflected light, also known as bounce light. And five, your accents. These are your darkest darks. Your accents are your darkest darks and your lightest lights. These would be highlights. At any given moment, you should know which one of those five you're painting. It doesn't matter whether it's digital doesn't matter whether it's traditional. It doesn't even matter if it's sketching with pencil. One of those five things you will be shading, rendering in some form or fashion. And it helps whenever you get lost, when you're not sure about why does that value, why does that color, why does that plane on that particular surface not look right? It might be because you've lost track of which one of these you're painting. These guys right here are what could be considered accents. In this particular case, the darkest darks. What I'll now throw in here is some of the lightest lights. This is white with a little bit of yellow in it. And this is pure white. I'm not painting, unless, painting this on too thickly, but you get a you can just see that difference. It's always interesting to have some of that light or some of those textures to come through. So we've established our lightest lights and our darkest darks. guys here. I don't want to go too dark with all this rock. Particularly some of the background snow. Now that we've got our foreground snow, foreground snow in shadow established, I think it's pretty safe to safe bet to lighten up some of the shadow the snow and shadow back here um, pretty much all that's really happened since that jump is that there's some lighter values of snow that I've painted in a little bit of this lighter value snow here um, just down in here as reflected light I want to add some more light up here I'm going to get some more light up into this upper area and that will start to reflect light back in here. What I'm looking for, we talked about the five types of light and what I'm looking for is a little bit of light that is reflecting onto the snow from over here someplace. 
I want, so I'll go for some thick. Some of that foreground snow may still be a little on the light side. Sorry, a little on the uh, dark and overly saturated side. With a larger brush. Now, I'm not sure if you can see that, but but did you notice there that I left some areas? Some of the gray, the slightly darker value gray around there is the value of the paper itself in some ways. The gray that I've mixed is a still a fraction too dark. That's one of the tricky things with gouache is that Lighter colors sometimes dry darker, and darker colors dry lighter. So it takes a little bit of experimenting to get that value just right. Okay, so now what we want is, what I want to do is throw some reflected light from all this light here back into some of these eight undersurfaces, side of this structure, and some of the rock on here. So we're looking for, I'll use some of that. Now, as you can see, by adding that blue, I've removed most of that warmth that was in there. But comparatively speaking, it's still quite light. It's almost equal to that, and I don't want it. I don't want it that light. It's a neutral gray that will read as warm against that much cooler, darker shadow side of the rock. The justification being that somewhere that side of that point there's a sunlight hitting something over here or off the ground and it's bouncing up into the rocks there. Once we get everything else in, once we start to get other values in here around the, the main structure, the foreground structure, we'll know how the background really feels. But it's not too bad. It's feeling okay at the moment. There may be some design changes we make as we go, but I think the color and value choices so far are holding out reasonably well. And the next step is to start getting this foreground structure.